Ladies and gentlemen, hello once again and coming to Not Quite Live from One Take Studios, where today's topic is properties of logarithms. It kind of makes sense that we should have properties of logarithms, because logarithms are the inverses of... Do you remember? Do you remember? They're the inverses of exponential functions, and since we have properties of exponents, it kind of follows that there should be a few properties of logarithms. The good news is that there are only a few. We only have three of these today. All right, so, dun dun dun, I'm going to start with a knowledge bank for us to draw from, and just by way of review, if we think log BAP for a second, this is the base, this is the answer, this is the power. In other words, this log is saying, hey, 2, to what power would give me this answer? And that is right, 2 cubed makes 8, and 2 squared makes 4, and 2 to the 5th makes 32, and 2 to the 6th makes 64. All right, so that's just a data bank that I'm going to draw from to show you a little bit of a way to develop these properties so that they make some sense for your brain, hopefully. All right. Can we agree that 5 equals 3 plus 2? I'm hoping the answer to that is yes. If that is true, based on what we have up here, that means that this statement should also be true. Since 5 is equivalent to log base 2 of 32, I'm going to take the 5 out and replace it with log base 2 of 32. And since 3 is the equivalent of log base 2 of 8, I'm plugging log base, base 2 of 8 in place of 3, and so on and so forth, taking something that's the equivalent of 2 and plugging it in place. Just look at these for a moment, please, would you? What do you see? They're all logarithms. They all have the same base all the way across. I've got a 32 and an 8 and a 4. If you didn't see the plus sign there and you just saw 32 and 8 and 4, what would you say is the relationship between these? Some of you might be going, well, 4 times 8 is 32, and you are right. 4 times 8 is 32, and that is the heart and soul, then, of this first property. The idea that, and this is a generic form here, that if I have log base b, all right, I'm putting the letter b here because I can have any base, well, any base within a reason, I don't want to do zeros or ones because those are just plain silly, um, of m times n. That says m times n. I'll show you why in a second here. Equals log base b of m plus log base b of n. Translation for this property. If I am adding two logs together and they have the same base, I can do that. I can condense them down to one log by simply taking these two end cap pieces and multiplying them together. I really wish these had names. The answer, so to speak, if you're a log bap kind of person, take those two end pieces, multiply them, and four times eight is 32. So if we are adding logs, we are going to do that through multiplication, which if we think about when we had properties of exponents, when we were multiplying, we kept the base and we added the exponents. Well, so this is sort of like that, kind of. All right, so that is property number one for the day. The idea that if I have two logs that are being added, I can condense those two logs down into one log, keeping the exact same base, but instead of addition, we use multiplication to put them together, and that actually does work, as we can see in our example here. By the way, properties go both directions. If I have these two, I can condense it to this one. But if I have something like this, where I've got a couple of factors, I can also expand my log and go from one log to two logs. So these go both directions, not just one-way vehicles. All right, next up we have 2 equals 5 minus 3. Again, hopefully a statement that we can agree with. What would this mean? Well, again, if we use our, our, our bank of knowledge up here at the top, we're saying that 2 is the same thing as log base 2 of 4, 5, and 3. Again, just pulling these off the top, taking something that's equal to 3, popping something else in its place, and taking a look to see what we can find. Again, we can see the 4 and the 32 and the 8 this time. Um, well, wait a minute. Here, if I was adding, I ended up multiplying, and here, 32 divided by 8 is 4? Oh, again, I can kind of see this relationship forming and taking place. So we are talking for this one. If I have log, oops, not large, log. Again, we're going to go with base b. 
to say that this works for all of our bases. Log base B of M over N. All right, division this time is equal to log base B of M minus log base B of N. This is property number two. Saying that if I have two logs, two logs, the same base, I can condense them to one log, but if I'm subtracting, I condense them through division. So M divided by N to get it down to one log. 32 divided by eight equals four. And as we can see, this is a true numerical statement, so this kind of fits. So if we are adding logs, we can do so through multiplication. And if we are subtracting logs, we can do so through division. Again, you can kind of see some parallels there. All right, so two down, one to go, and then a couple of examples just to make sure that we are good. Dun, 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 dun. Still keeping my same number bank here for a moment. Um, so I want to keep these guys so I can see them. Yes, yes, I can see them. So I'm still working off of these guys here. Um, six equals three times two. Again, another statement that I do hope that we can agree with. And six is the equivalent of log base two of 64. I'm going to take that one step further, and I'm going to rearrange that one even. And I'm going to say 64 is the same thing as 4 cubed. Be patient with me for a second here. All right? So 4 cubed is 64, and we know that log base 2 of 64 equals 6. So this is just something that's equivalent. 3, I'm going to leave as a 3. I'm not going to change it with anything. I actually don't want to use the log base 2 of 8 right now. All right? It would mess up my example. But the 2, I'm going to replace with log base 2 of 4, just like we said from last time. Look at the arrangement of numbers here. What do you see? There's a 2 and a 4 and a 3, and a 2 and a 4 and a 3. The 2 is the base, the 2 is the base. All right, the 4 here was after the log, the 4 here is still after the log, but the 3 that was my exponent is now out front as a factor, a multiplying number. What does this mean? This is our next property, which is saying that, where'd it go, where'd it go? Um, oops, you know what, I don't want to do it in red. Log. There we go. Log, again, base b, and we're going to go with m to the n power. Could you use different variables from these? Yes, different textbooks use different things, but this works. Is the same thing as taking that exponent and swinging it out front as a multiplier. So this n that was an exponent now goes out front as a coefficient, essentially, and it becomes n times log base 2 of m. My brain calls this the swing property. If I see an exponent here, I can just swing it out front and it becomes a multiplier. Vice versa, because again, we said these things are two-way streets. If I see a coefficient out front, I can swing it around and call it an exponent and that will work as well. That is property number three, ladies and gents, and those are our three properties. All right, so just want to run through some examples of some of the things that you might see with this. Um, ultimately, we're not getting there today, but ultimately you would see some of these things taking effect when you're trying to solve equations that have logarithms in them, because that sounds like fun. All right, so uh, the two main things that you'll see for practicing these skills usually are, dun, 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 the first one is condensing. In my brain, if you are condensing, you are a carpenter. You are taking two logs and you're putting them together to make one log. You are condensing them. If you put two logs together to make something, that makes you a carpenter, in my opinion. Examples of what this might look like. All right, so here's the first one. I have two logs. I have log base six of four. Hmm, six to what power would make four? I don't know, it doesn't go evenly, but what I do notice is that I have two logs that I'm adding, and they both have a base of six. Find your properties. Oh look, two logs that I'm adding with the same base. What can I do? I can condense them into one log, making something new out of it. Still going to be base six, but I'm gonna do four times nine, take those two end pieces, four times nine, and call it 36. And hey, now I can simplify that quite nicely. This is saying six to what power makes 36? Two. Yay, condensed, simplified, evaluated. Take your choice of directions, there we go. Uh, another one of these guys, log base five of 100 minus log base five of four. Again, I can't do these, either one of them, easily in my brain. Okay, I don't know, five to what power makes 100, it's gonna be messy. But if I'm subtracting these two and I see two logs with the same base, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, oh look, 
two logs being subtracted, same base, what am I going to do? I'm going to do exactly what the property tells me to do. I'm going to keep the log, and I'm going to go with a base of b again. No, I'm not. <laughs> Sorry, the base is the same, which means it's not b this time. It's a 5. I'm going to put a 5 there instead. Much better. And since it's subtraction, I'm going to do 100 divided by 4. 100 divided by 4 is 25. And hey, again, this is something nice and neat. 5 to what power makes 25? 2. Are all the answers for these 2s? No, they are not. <laughs> this is just happening right now because these are the examples that I set up. All right. Um, if we can expand, sorry, if we can condense and put things together, we can probably expand, which in my brain means that you are a lumberjack because I'm taking one log and I'm splitting it in two. I'm splitting logs. That makes me a lumberjack. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Hmm. Well, okay. This is a little bit interesting, and as far as splitting in two is concerned, this one you're not going to see it as easily, but this is the one that you're going to see most likely in expanding form. That's actually this swing property right here, and hopefully you can recognize that. Log base 2 of 32 to the 6th. I can't do 32 to the 6th easily in my brain. I, it just it's, it's too much for me to handle. But I know that according to this property, I can expand it. I can swing out front, and I can say, hey, I'm going to put the 6 here instead as a multiplier. So this becomes 6 times log base 2 of 32. And now this is something a lot more manageable because I happen to know what log base 2 of 32 is. In fact, it's written right here in case you forgot. That's just 5. So this is really saying I have 6 times 5, otherwise known as 30. See, I told you the answers weren't always 2. All right, and so this is the property that you're going to probably see most for expanding, but it might look something like this, log base 3 of 243. Do you need to expand to figure this out? No. Do you know what 3 to what power makes 243? Maybe not, but maybe, maybe, I don't know, for some reason, your brain happens to know that this is the same as log base 3 of 9 times 27. I'm going to put parentheses just to make sure that we got that. So 243 is the same thing as 9 times 27. So if I knew that, ooh, ooh, property, property, look at what I've got. I've got log, I've got a base, I've got two things that are being multiplied here. I can split this log. I can be a lumberjack and I can write this in two pieces. And I can call it the log base 3 of 9. And then, again, this is multiplying, but we are going to be adding, that's what the property says, adding log base 3 of 27. And now this is a little bit more manageable perhaps for my brain because I'm going to say, all right, hmm, 3 squared makes 9, and then 3 cubed makes 27, and oh look, 2 plus 3 makes 5. All right, so that's just a little bit of practice as to how we might see some of these used. This is not really valuable practice at this point in time. This is more along the lines of just getting your brain used to thinking along these lines. Again, we got these three properties. Make sure that you have them where you can find them. Okay, guys, last thing, last thing, but you got to see this because otherwise you're not going to see this. These are inverses. Logs are inverses of exponential stuff. Yes, logs, exponential, inverses. What does that mean? Let's start with your brain being nice. Log base 3 of 3, bleh. yes, log base 3 of 3 to the 11th power. There are a couple of ways that you can view this. I get it. You might view this as, hey, this says 3 to what power makes 3 to the 11th? Hmm. 3 to what power? 3 to what power could possibly make 3 to the 11th? I bet I can figure that out. Or maybe, maybe you see this something with a swing property where we can swing the 11 out front and we can say, hey, this is 11 times log base 3 of 3 and I can figure out log base 3 of 3. Can I suggest a different view of the world? If logarithms and exponential functions are inverses of each other, what happens when they are both present at the same time? What happens when I have a logarithm, oh look, I have a logarithm with a base of 3, and I have something exponential at the same time? I also have something exponential with a base of 3. This is exponential, base of 3. This is log, base of 3. What do inverse operations do to each other? They cancel each other out. What's left? 11. 
yes, I could have gotten it that way. Yes, I could have gotten it that way. But if I can see this as being both exponential and logarithmic with the same base, I know that inverses will undo each other. They will cancel each other out. Why do I make this point? Because this one had multiple perspectives, and this one doesn't. All right, this one does not. This is 5 to the log base 5 of 8. Yes, I just put a logarithm in an exponent. This is 5 to the log base 5 of 8. Log base 5 of 8, that whole thing is the exponent. And there's no alternate perspective that my brain can take on this one to figure it out. But if I am aware, what I see is I see something exponential with a base of 5. I also see a logarithm with a base of 5. This is the same problem as this, as far as perspectives go. Exponent, base of 5, log, base of 5. These are inverse operations. They will undo each other. What is the only thing left here? Just the 8, and done. And so that perspective can be useful, sometimes more useful, sometimes less useful, but should be easy, easy things to pick up here and there if you can be aware. All right, so make sure that you've got these guys on hand and have fun playing with them, and good luck. Thanks.